Welcome to another Dwarf Fortress video on Base Bellagio. Today is another world generation tutorial on how you can embark practically anywhere in this game, even in monster caves. And in this episode, I want to show you how to generate a world with many different, very unique monsters, including dragons, and how you can embark into a dragon lair and create a fortress outside of a dragon lair or even inside of one. And I just want to thank all the new subscribers and followers. I really appreciate all you guys liking the videos and sharing the videos. It really helps out small channels like my own. Now let's get into it. We want to generate, I just have it saved as big, but really it is a small world, 65 by 65. And you want to scroll all the way down to the bottom to this overlooked setting. It is make caves visible. With this on yes, you will now see caves on the map. So monster caves will not be hidden. We want to play around a little bit with the caves right now. Just up them a little bit, but the main thing is the monster caves. Let's head up to the monster area. We want to up this Mega Beast cave to a big number. Let's do 1,000 Mega Beast caves on this small world. Let's just see what happens. This is more of like a slider than a physical number. Put it that way. The Titans we can even increase to 5. Let's up the Demons. And then up all the other threats a little bit. The 13 Secrets of whatever world we're, we're building. And you can pretty much tweak any of these settings out you want. The whole idea is this. You increase the amount of vampires in your game, and there's more vampire lairs, you can embark in them. You increase the number of goblins in your world by upping the demons. You can embark near these different areas and set up and have increased activity and much more adventure. We are going to save the parameter, just so I always have a reference point. I, that's why I make a whole new one to have as my play around test world gen. And then we create the world gen. You want to at least let it generate for about 700 years if you want dragons. At least 700. So now on this map, you're going to see the caves. But it's not as easy as just loading into a cave area. It is if you want randomization. This is a beautiful map, by the way. Look at this island volcano with a cave on it. So we're on a lot of years right now. Let's just pause it. Well, uh, not a lot has happened in terms of history. Probably because the monsters have uh, devastated. Let's see. Let's just let it. Historical figures are very low. Probably because the world is infested with mega beasts and monsters. This will be an interesting embark. Now you want to keep world, go back to the main menu, now start it up. Now the legendary universes of wonder only has 7,000 historic figures, not many sites, very stifled history because way too many monsters. We could definitely tweak those uh, caves down to maybe a hundred instead of a thousand and then play around with that so you have more of a history. But here is the interesting thing. We want to pick a mega beast, okay? Male dragon. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Asna the Ivory Wealths, male dragon. You want to look at their history. Usually it's a lot more when there's more people fighting it. But look, it says Asna is settled in Newt Cave, the Tired Loot. Now that we know where this dragon is settled, we have to find this cave and build there. So Newt Cave, the Tired Newt. Now we can go to fortress mode, skip tutorial, and you want to look at this map now for that cave. Here's a cave here. And you read the names of each cave. Here it is. We found it. New cave, the tired loot. There's iron, gold, silver, wow, a lot of stuff. So we want to embark here. And now the slightly hard part of finding the cave on the map here. You kind of want to just scan around until it says the cave's name. Three weeks later. 
The caves are really hard to find. So for the first couple ones, until you get used to finding them, I would go for easy cave targets. This island with a volcano, the cave literally is on the volcano at the base of it. Sometimes the cave symbol on the upper map kind of gives you an idea where it is zoomed in. So this is right on the river bend. So let's take a look around here. We found it right here. So we are going to embark right there. Perfect. Now we're just going to go to play now to show you the cave and we might get wiped out by the mega beast right away. Now, if we go down to our list here and other, we could see the mega beast. It is a zombie hydra. Also trolls live here. Some river otters and a long nose gar. We want to see this guy though. An undead hydra. Relatively young for a 6,000 year old world. A giant dragon-like monster with seven biting heads. She's basically unbreakable and very strong, but she is quite clumsy. Her scales are gold. Her eyes are black. On this map is her lair, and I think I found it. Right here. In this, like, mountainous plateau in the middle of the area. There's some trolls that live in here, too. And the deeper we go, it just ends there. That seems to be the lair. Sometimes the cave systems are super elaborate. Now let's just play out and see what happens. There's a lot of uh, enemies here. We should just have our dwarves. Look, someone assumed the position of queen of the secret of letter. Don't tell me I have a queen. We're going to dig down here. Now this could be a very interesting embark. This could really add flavor to your games. Basically, don't shy away from some of these sites and locations. Especially caves, towers, weird things. Unless the game specifically tells you you cannot embark there, then you can't do it. But you can also embark next to it and then get heightened visits from whatever lives next door. You're also setting your game up for the future when they do release adventure mode. Because then, you know, you'll be able to go everywhere. So if I was playing this game, I would just big build mega stairs down and look. Already, look, people are found dead. We have to see what's happening. Let's pause. Something happened. It could have been the trolls. It could have... Nope, it's the uh, Hydra. Let's let this play out. And then we're going to get a wiped out... One Is one of my population undead or is one of my population... Nope, he just has no job. This is now an enemy of mine. My former... And then look, Withered crumbled. The way you get around that is I like to do a very narrow and long embark like a six by one you have to get the aim down right because like i said these layers are a little hard to find we'll try it down here at this this is at the base of the forest here it is we found one it's around here somewhere sometimes you just have to scan i saw it pop up cave here it is right here at the fork in the river this area here that's our bullseye. So we would embark and this real narrow embark. We would put, this is a very good example. We would put the monster cave on one extreme end of it, barely. And then we would embark on the far end of it, away from the monster as much as possible. This looks like a wild map. Let's take a look what the creature is. It's a dragon, a Kira dragon, the current resident. A lot of other creatures. There's Gorlax here. Wow. It's going to burn the entire forest down. It's a dragon as old as the world. Doesn't feel anything while in conflict. Gigantic reptilian creature. It is magical. It can breathe fire. These monsters can live for thousands of years. And there it is. We are far away from the dragon. And we can get even farther away. And it is possible to survive these situations get a base going and possibly have your dwarves grow up worshiping the entity that they live by making like a cult of the dragon wow these trees are collapsing the ground as they fall but to reiterate the main point is embark on random areas give yourself a test run 
a fortress in a really rough area with mega beasts that live right around the corner. You might have a little bit more fun than you thought. But thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in this video. Thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. Share this with a buddy that likes Dwarf Fortress and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you for watching.